The refreshed Atlas and Atlas Cross Sport has been unveiled at the Chicago Auto Show. And guess what? Gone is the VR6 and the previous four-cylinder. Yeah, so they've gone to just a turbo two-liter four-cylinder now. Mm -hmm. You can see this trend. Actually, the Toyota Highlander, it got rid of their V6 engine, and they went just with a turbo four. It's all about fuel economy and emissions. And this is really, Andrea, what should have been a full model redo for yeah. the Atlas, because it's been out since 2017, but it really is a major facelift, really. The Atlas family is getting a lot of nice changes for 2024. Welcome to the Motor Mouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we put out these kinds of videos all the time. It would mm -hmm. be really great if you could subscribe and also follow along on Instagram so you can see what's coming up on the channel. Uh, let's start with you. what, the looks or the engine? I say we get into the engine. All right. Both the Atlas and Atlas Cross Sport will be powered solely by a two-liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine. It has an eight-speed automatic transmission with 269 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. The new engine provides similar power to the outgoing VR6. It has only seven horsepower less but gets a small bump in torque, an extra seven pound-feet compared to the outgoing VR6. Towing capacity remains the same at 5,000 pounds. In Canada, all-wheel drive is standard. In the U.S., front-wheel drive is standard. All-wheel drive is available across the model lineup. So Volkswagen and the Atlas did have on the base model, the entry-level price point car was a turbo four-cylinder, and now they've ditched the old V6, which is around, the engine was actually yeah. introduced about 30 years ago. Highly inefficient. Uh, terrible on gas, mm -hmm. but you know, good for everyday use. I think the broader spectrum of torque, so more torque in, in usable spaces will be welcome. And Volkswagen anticipates obviously better fuel economy for this model. I think some people are going to miss the VR6, mm -hmm. but the feedback that I received when we reviewed the Volkswagen Atlas is that the two liter turbocharged four cylinder that was offered, they also really liked. I don't know, Andrea. Ford called and they want their <laughs> grill back. I don't know. It looks like a Ford to me from the front. Well, I like the grill much better than what is on the outgoing model. I think it looks really good. And all of the illuminated exterior lighting, wow, it makes such a huge difference on this vehicle. I think the lighting and is part of the reason why it looks like the Ford. It's got the the LEDs that go around the outside and then in the middle, similar to what you would see with a Ford mm -hmm. F-150 pickup truck. Anyway, that's what I see. You right below, tell us what you see. To me, from the front, looks like a Ford. I think overall they did a great job with the exterior design. I like the look of the Atlas anyway and the Atlas Cross Sport. This just tweaks it a bit and gives it a fresher look. All right, let's get into the details. The Atlas and Atlas Cross Sport get a new front end design and greater differentiation between those two models. Both vehicles have a wide chrome four bar grill, which is framed by LED headlights and the newly standard adaptive front lighting system. On all but the base trim, the daytime running lights wrap around the headlights and continue into an illuminated light bar that sits atop of an illuminated VW logo. The Cross Sport gets a gloss black grille, gloss black X-design elements stretching across the lower fascia, similar to what we saw in the Taos. At the rear, both models add a larger spoiler and all but the base model has an illuminated light bar. The Atlas Cross Sport models also add a more aggressive rear diffuser than the previous generation. All trims get new wheel designs from 18 to 20 inches. So this is just a refresh. So the wheelbase is the same. The length is the same. You're going to have the same interior space. It's based on the same underpinnings, but you're not losing any space. So you still have that large Atlas that we expect from Volkswagen. All right, it is the inside. Like the outside was fine. The size is enormous, mm -hmm. but the inside we called plastic fantastic and didn't have really uh, a great interior. And they no. say, we haven't been able to touch it and feel it, that this is the area that they've spent a lot of time on. Well, one of my biggest complaints about the Atlas family is that it did have a lot of hard plastic, even on that top trim, you know, coming in around 60,000 Canadian is a lot of money and I expected more. As well, it came standard with a 6.5 inch touchscreen and an 8 inch digital driver display. There was an available 8 inch touchscreen and a 10 and a quarter digital driver display. Things have changed with this model. It's almost like Volkswagen listened. Mm. Yeah, they listened. They gave us a standard 
12 inch infotainment screen. A lot mm. of people will like that. Everyone yeah. likes big screens. However, <laughs> uh, noticing in the pictures and the video, uh, they've gone to the same touch sensitive controls that they have in the new yeah. GTI. There's no volume knob. You have to swipe your hand along the plus and minus at the bottom of the screen to yeah. change the volume. It's not, it's, it's the answer to the question nobody's asking. Like we've heard that they're maybe gonna put the volume knob back in the GTI and the Golf R. Why did they bring this out? Like, I don't understand that. There was a huge uproar about it. Mm -hmm. And one of the positives of this current model is the integrated touchscreen, which I really applauded Volkswagen for. Now they've gone with more of a floating touchscreen. Let us know if you like that. Um, it doesn't sit high on top of the dash, so um, I think it still looks pretty good. But they've, they've claimed that there's uh, more soft touch materials, and that's one area that needed to be addressed. I also like that they've gone with a floating center console so you get that good storage area underneath as well. You know for items especially if you've got a growing family you know I can't believe all the stuff that I used to carry with me all the time. So I think overall it looks more premium. I have to get in it and touch it and feel it to make sure but I, I like the refresh and also you're now getting a standard 10 and a quarter inch digital driver display as well. Yeah, Volkswagen's moving entirely to digital screens for pretty much all their products, so that's mm -hmm. good. The VW will come standard with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a wireless charger, heated steering wheel with paddle shifters, ventilated front seats, and a height adjustable passenger seat. You'll also find six standard USB-C ports. Eight are available with 45 watt fast charging. Top models feature quilted leather seats with a diamond pattern, and there's even available ambient lighting in 30 color choices. IQ Drive, Volkswagen's driver assist technology, is standard for 2024, and there is an available head-up display and predictive adaptive cruise control. So there you go. They mm -hmm. have updated the outside. They did a new front clip and a new rear clip. That's classic facelift stuff. Yeah. Uh, they plumbed in a new turbocharged four cylinder, ripped out the VR6 and given us an updated interior. Is that enough in light of a new pilot arriving? Yeah. Uh, the new Grand uh, Highlander. Highlander. Um, new Palisade and Telluride were just introduced into the market this mm -hmm. year. Uh, you know, a lot of competition. I think where the Atlas really shines is when it comes to space. Overall cargo capacity is so good. The third row is actually comfortable for an adult. And it's really the Toyota Grand Highlander that was introduced recently that is going to compete directly with that Atlas. Even the Telluride and Palisade, they're a little bit smaller than the Atlas. Okay, before we leave, one little interesting fact. Mm. Is the Atlas outsells the Palisade and Telluride combined mm -hmm. in the Canadian market. It outsells them combined. So, and it outsells the Honda Pilot. So when people say who buys it, a lot of people buy it. And I think that people who are interested in a German brand but can't make that stretch to something like an Audi Q7, this keeps them satisfied. They're in a German brand. They feel that Volkswagen has a bit of an elevated status, even though it is a non-luxury brand. Well, there it is. It's mm -hmm. the updated Volkswagen Atlas. What do you think of that? Good and bad, type below. And also, it, this would be really cool if you could subscribe. It really helps us a lot. Mm -hmm. And also follow on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea. We'll see you next time.